Okay, well, thank you for joining us, everyone. It's September 20th, public meeting of the Town of Conception Bay South. And I wanna thank everyone for their patience, for those who tuned in at seven o'clock expecting to see us. Uh, we went 1975 there for a few minutes, but we seem to be okay partially now. Anyway, we're on YouTube, so that, uh, that says something. Um, first out the gate this evening, uh, I'd like to uh, present our land acknowledgement. The Town of Conception Bay South would like to respectfully acknowledge the territory in which we gather as the ancestral homelands of the Beothic, the island of Newfoundland as the ancestral homelands of the Mi'kmaq and Beothic. We also respectfully acknowledge Labrador as the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Innu of Natasinan, the Inuit of Nunatsiavut, and the Inuit of Nunatuavut. We strive for respectful partnerships with all the peoples of this province as we search for collective healing and true reconciliation and honor this beautiful land together. Okay, so we'll move right along to the adoption of agendas and minutes. Adoption of the meeting agenda. We have a motion, Councillor Butler, second, Councillor Hardy. Um, adoption of the meeting minutes of September 6th. Motion from Councillor Connor, seconded from Councillor Hillier. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Business arising from previous minutes, we'll deal with those in this meeting and of course in meetings going forward. Uh, visitors, presentations and petitions. Uh, this evening, I think uh, all we have is a proclamation this evening and I'm gonna read that out now. It's a proclamation for Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder Awareness Month, September, 2022. Whereas fetal alcohol spectrum disorder is a diagnostic term used to describe impacts on the brain and body of individuals prenatally exposed to alcohol, FASD is a lifelong disability. Individuals with FASD will experience some degree of challenges in their daily living and need support with motor skills, physical health, learning, memory, attention, communication, emotional regulation, and social skills to reach their full potential. Each individual with FASD is unique and has areas of both strengths and challenges. Whereas FASD NL is a pan-provincial organization that educates, provides supports and resources, and raises awareness about fetal alcohol spectrum disorder in Newfoundland and Labrador and Atlantic Canada. And whereas FASD NL is leading a three-year FASD prevention, awareness, training, and collaborative action project in the four Atlantic provinces, and whereas FASD Awareness Month is devoted to raising awareness of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder to improve prevention of FASD and diagnosis and support for individuals with FASD and broad public awareness helps to put FASD on the map. And therefore I, Mayor Darren Bent, do proclaim the month of September, 2022 to be FASD Awareness Month as cause, issue, special occasion, et cetera, in the town of Concession Bay South. And I'll sign that today, September 20th. Okay, next up, new business, and we're starting with Councillor Josh Barrett. Thank you, Your Worship. I want to extend a congratulations to the RNC CBS Patrol Services team who were recently honored on September 14th with the Public Service Award of Excellence. The Public Service Award of Excellence recognizes individuals and teams who have made an outstanding contribution to the public service. It is the highest honor an employee can receive from the government in Newfoundland and Labrador. And in particular, the team recognized in CBS for this award is Constable Daniel Cadigan, Constable Kyle Fowler, Constable Brittany uh, Hearley, Constable Stephen Martin, Constable Alexander O'Keefe, and Constable Jake Sharp. And so, as we all know here, um, since establishing the branch, the RNC branch here in Conception Bay South in 2018, um, we've worked with the RNC on a number of public safety initiatives across the town. Uh, we hear about them responding to emergency incidents at Manuel's River or monitoring speeds and school zones, which I was happy to see actually a few times over the past couple of weeks, their presence there. So thank you for that. And um, it's been it's been a pleasure to work with them. And so I just wanted to once again, extend my congratulations to the RNC CBS Patrol Services team and thank them for their service to enhancing public safety in our community. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Barrett. Well-deserved. Councillor Hardy. 
Thank you, Mayor Bent. Um, so a couple of things for more for this evening. I did have some residents reach out to me about the lights at the Legion Road. Um, oh, some of the residents were finding that when they would get up to the sensor, the lights weren't turning to the applicable um, red, green, what have you. So some of the residents were actually getting out of their vehicles and walking up to the vehicle in front of them and just knocking on their windows, like, can you move up a little bit closer to the sensor? So we have reached out, uh, the town actually reached out to the provincial government because that is something that they maintain. So, you know, yes, it may be frustrating, but please be sure that you are being safe if you are, if that's something you do, which I'd refrain if you should do it. Hopefully everyone can start to uh, move a little bit closer. I know hockey season is in full effect. So uh, both of the stadiums are certainly busy as are the Tim Hortons. So I know people go in between the two uh, Tim Hortons because I know we do. Um, the second thing I'd like to uh, recognize is one of the residents in Ward 4 was recently uh, recognized for receiving a life-saving award. Uh, Patrick Morgan, who helped pull a drowning girl from Lawrence Pond in CBS uh, in June uh, 2000, uh, 2000 2022 and performed CPR on her and she was unconscious and not breathing and his actions actually saved her life. So he was uh, presented um, with this life-saving award from um, the Honorable uh, Judy Foote. Um, so that was uh, just noted. So I thought I'd like to do a shout out because uh, Patrick actually lives in Ward 4 and I was um, certainly seeing him up around Lawrence Pond. So it's, it's nice to know that we have those residents out there. Uh, last thing I'd like to talk about is a lot of people probably have seen on social media in the last few days that it is Smile Cookies um, from the September 19th to 25th and all of the CVS uh, Tim Hortons, all of the proceeds actually go to the support the minor softball, the field of dreams. So I know here this evening, myself and um, Councillor Butler, we certainly brought in some treats for all of our uh, fellow councillors here. So, you know, next time we have Tim Hortons from the 19th to 25th, if you could certainly support the uh, the CBS Minor Softball. Thank you, Mayor Bent. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hardy. Councillor Morris. Thank you, Mayor Bent. You confused me. I thought you were going to Councillor Connors. <laughs> um, I would just like to mention the Chef for Trails event that's coming up on October 1st at Manuel's River. Um, this event is fantastic. Lots of great chefs with amazing food along one of the most beautiful trails in the province. Um, and this year, it's actually part of Savor CVS Festival 2022, which the town and Manuel's River are partnering with. Um, you can explore nine communities over nine days. Fall and Food Cultural Festival with, will feature local farm farms and food producers, musicians and artists, our culture and heritage and much more. So this is going to be, I think, a great event. And I know there's going to be lots coming out over the next few days uh, about all the different events that are going to be happening. And we hope to see, you know, many residents involved. And the chef, Chefs for Trails, you can register now, uh, Manuel Zerber. I know there are still some tickets left, but not a lot. Thank you, Mayor Bent. Thank you, Councillor Morris. Councillor Connors. Thank you, Mayor Bent. Uh, on July 17th this year, our, fam our, our fam community was devastated by a heartbreaking news of Samuel O'Reilly Porter was taken from us at the tender age of six by tragic drowning. I want to take this time on behalf of Sammy, mom and dad, uh, Angie and Steve, and for those who don't know, Angie is my is my niece, and there and <clears throat> Sammy's brother Aiden. I would like to publicly thank, say thank you to everyone for the outpouring of community support, compassion, kindness, and love uh, to the entire community, to all the first responders, especially our Inception Bay South Fire Department who are who are on the scene, uh, to the sporting community, to the business community. To everyone, thank you. Uh, thank you. Your kindness and compassion has made this heartbreaking, life changing tragedy a little more bearable. Sammy was only six years old, but he's distinctive charm, unique personality, infectious laugh, smiling eyes, and energy for life will be a memory we can all hold in our hearts forever. A close family friend uh, said, Most people in the world will live their entire lives and will never touch the hearts of so many, as many people as Sam was able to touch in just these six years with us. Sammy will always be in our hearts and we promise to keep his spirit and love for his life for life alive. The support and compassion from everyone has certainly gone above and beyond. Um, over, it was truly overwhelming, uh, more than anyone can imagine. Steve, Angie and Aiden, say thank you, and they will be forever grateful. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Connors, and of course our, our hearts go out to Steve and Angie and your entire family and uh, all the best to them. Thank you. Councillor Butler. Beautiful message there, Councillor Connors. A couple of economic development uh, things I'd like to mention. Conception Bay South Heritage Series. The town has produced four heritage booklets which have been available for sale at the town hall over the past couple of years. You can purchase a set of four for $12 or purchase for $4 each. The four titles are The Calgary Surrey, A Place to Grow, A Price to Dare, The Battle of Foxtrap. You can learn more about the booklets on the heritage page of the town's website. And the 2022 Bright Business Achievement Awards. Small Business Week is scheduled for October 16th to 22nd, 2022. As in previous years, the town will host its annual Bright Business Achievement Awards during the week, which is scheduled to take place Wednesday, October 19th. The nomination period is now open and has been extended until 2 p.m. on Thursday, September 29th. Nominations will be accepted online via the town's website, via paper drop-off and email. Please visit the town's website for information. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Butler. Councillor Hillier. Yes, Your Worship, just want to uh, send out congr one congratulations this evening. Uh, this past week, uh, Sport NL announced their uh, award winners for the past year, Athletes of the Year, Coach of the Year, and so on. Uh, and I want to congratulate all those who uh, who received awards. In particular, uh, I'd like to recognize uh, Allison Kirby, who was uh, named uh, Provincial Female Coach of the Year. Allison is one of our residents and is a coach with uh, Cygnus Gymnastics, which is a, a regional gymnastics club. And uh, anyone who's been following, I guess, that uh, sport at all has seen successes that that club has had over the past couple of years. So congratulations, Allison, and to all those who uh, who received awards. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Hillier. I don't think that's the the first award that Allison's received in that capacity. She's uh, definitely made her mark in that sport for sure. Councillor Tilly. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I have a ton of stuff to speak about tonight, but uh, the majority of that from a war perspective, I'll cover off in my public works report. But uh, I'd just like to say, uh, take a shout out now to the uh, CBS Raiders uh, Baseball Association. They had three teams that participated at Atlantic Championships uh, last week. And then uh, uh, from all reports that they had a, a great tournament and uh, um, all the kids uh, enjoyed themselves. And uh, I think they're all back home safe and sound. So uh, kudos to the Minor Baseball Association. Okay, thank you, Councillor Tilly. Deputy Mayor Goss. Thank you, Mayor Bent. Just a couple of things I want to mention. Um, Last Wednesday, uh, myself and Councillor Butler and uh, Councillor Barrett attended an event at Topsail Beach for, for the Association for New Canadians. And we had, uh, we had campfires and uh, wiener roast, marshmallow roast, and it was families, uh, kids, parents, grandparents came out for the event. I think we had over 300 that came out uh, to, to uh, mix and mingle and taking Topsail Beach. It ended up being an absolutely beautiful evening. The sunset was amazing. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a great evening. Um, now my other, uh, another item I wanna mention is, is uh, brings me to Ward 2. Um, uh, Councillor Hardy already mentioned the Smile Cookie Campaign, but um, this campaign is going to help uh, the Field of Dreams which is in War Two. So if anyone's not familiar, that's the All Saints School site where the building is gone. And we have the CBS Softball Association and a very dedicated group of parents and volunteers that are working really hard to bring that, uh, bring that, that park to a new level um, and uh, develop a clubhouse there and a new green space for the community. So all of the proceeds, the net proceeds from the Smile the Cookie campaign here in Conception Bay South are going to the Field of Dreams. So um, get out and buy your cookies and uh, help support this great cause that's in Ward 2. And my last item is also for Ward 2. And I just want to say to people in our community, more specifically Don Hill Road, 
that the end is in sight and construction okay. which end <laughs> and uh the Duns Hill road is being um upgraded and, and getting prepped for asphalt which we should see very soon it's been a long um process but a lot of work has been done and when it's completed i think the residents are going to be really really pleased with the final result just hang in another little while because the end is in sight thanks mayor bent thank you deputy mayor and i'll start off with one of my own uh neil's line is being tore ripped from stem to stern uh over the next uh, week or two it started i believe today um and uh, there's a, a, a um a, a detour that takes people around quite a way to get them, I suppose, down Fowler's Road is about the only exit back out of there to get to the school area in the morning. But uh, hang in there. Um, it's unfortunate that it's happening this time of year, I have to say, because of the location. But, you know, uh, with the with the contractor schedule and so forth, it's it's happening now. So uh, uh, the good part about it is, is uh, well, the part of the good part about it is, is that there's going to be new pavement, new road there and sidewalk on Neil's line for those people that have to walk down through there to get to the school, they'll be able to do it much safer than they've ever been able to do it before, trying to squeeze by the building on the corner there. So hopefully that'll be done in quick order. And I know that they've, they had a lot of staff up there today. So hopefully that'll get done soon. Um, just a couple other things. I just want to say uh, it was an honor to be able to uh, join members of Legion Branch 50 Kellegrews uh, yesterday morning to lay a wreath in remembrance of the service and dedication of Queen Elizabeth II uh, here at our Monument of Honor. Um, it's always great to be able to participate in events with the uh, Legion group and uh, they did so fittingly and held uh, the two minutes of silence at 11 a.m. this morning uh, as the town uh, uh, showed its respect uh, to uh, Queen Elizabeth II. Um, and uh, it, was a, it was a very uh, nice event that they put off yesterday. So I, I thank, want to thank the uh, uh, President David Strickland and all members of the Legion that were involved in that. Um, just one other thing, uh, this past weekend, well, I guess the end of last week, I was at uh, my, I attended my first urban municipalities caucus meeting, uh, as a mayor, um, at, in Grand Falls, Windsor. And I will say that that's the furthest I've been away from home since sometime in 2019. So, uh, I passed by Clarenville. Once I did that, I was in a new territory and it was a, it was a great adventure. But, uh, anyway, uh, we had, uh, meetings with colleagues from, uh, I guess some of the larger municipalities around the island and Labrador and, uh, talked about, uh, issues that were, uh, you know, were, I, I guess, similar in, in all regions. And we all had an interest in uh, infrastructure and how that works and how we, uh, how we, uh, uh, you know, uh, get our money from the federal and provincial governments. We talked a little bit about the near plan, uh, the Northeast Avalon regional plan and what it may mean uh, for mis uh, municipalities on the Northeast Avalon and, uh, and wastewater was an issue. And of course, it's been an issue for municipalities around the island for quite some time and, uh, and uh, hats off to Grand Falls, Windsor, our hosts. Uh, they have are fully compliant with a, a nearly $14 million wastewater uh, system out there. So uh, they've done good work on that. And we wanna do good work here in Conception Bay South too. So it's just gonna take us more time, but uh, we're gonna work towards that. Um, doctor shortage, um, you know, hitting crisis levels. And we had uh, Dr. Jared Butler uh, spoke to us and, uh, you know, he's suggesting that uh, even though it's a crisis now, we haven't seen the worst of the doctor shortage yet it, over the next three to five years, it could be worse. So it's something that we all have to be mindful of as municipalities. And of course, being on the Northeast Avalon, it's a, it may be a little bit easier for us in uh, in access to doctors but uh, we talked about things that communities can do to make uh, make yourself uh, you know uh, more attractive to doctors uh, in in regions and so forth so some good discussions there and of course uh, uh, a number of other things were discussed so it was a it was a good meeting and it was a, it was great to get together with colleagues uh, from other municipalities that I haven't seen since I've been mayor and uh, certainly look forward to uh, seeing them again at the uh, municipalities conference in November so to continue some of those discussions. Okay, we'll move right along to the uh, heart of the business for this evening. And uh, first up, as always, recommendations of the Planning and Development Committee. And the chair there is Councillor Rex Hillier. Uh, yes, Your Worship, following our uh, motions brought forward from uh, our September 12th meeting, I believe it was. Number 16A. Lot 7, Graham Mifflin Drive, be it so resolved that in accordance with section 9.3 of the town's development regulations, 
Parking relief is granted so that the proposed development of an office building at Lot 7 Gray Mifflin Drive is approved with 38 off-street parking spaces so moved. Seconder. Councillor Butler, discussion? Uh, yes, I just want to point out that Gray Mifflin Drive is in the uh, uh, gateway <laughs> development. Uh, this is in the gateway development and this is a, a building that we're hoping to see go, go there in the not too distant future. And they need 38 spaces. That even sounds better, uh, Councillor Hillier. Perfect. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary reminded. Carried. Number 6B, 53 Legion Road. Be it so resolved and in accordance with Section 15 of the Town's Fence Regulations. Application 2125 received on August 26, 2022 for a front yard fence on the property of 53 Legion Road be approved. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Barrett. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary reminded. Carried. Number 6C. 77 Middlebite Road, be it so resolved in accordance with Council's discretionary authority of Section 16 of the Town's Fence Regulations. Application number 2114 received August 17th, 2022 for a rear yard fence at 77 Middlebite Road. Be approved on condition that the fence be a maximum of 2.4 meters high. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Hardy, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm going to have a declared conflict uh, on 60. Um, I live in the near vicinity of that area. And uh, I think for the first time in 13 years, uh, when I declare conflict of interest, I'm not going to have to leave the actual room. So I got to vacate to the public uh, public gallery. Yeah. yeah. So under the new guidelines released by the province during a public meeting where the public gives access, the councillor doesn't have to leave the room. The councillor can go to the back gallery during the discussion and vote. All right, number 60, Your Worship, uh, 583, 585 Conception Bay Highway. Be it so resolved that in accordance with Section 4.15 of the Town's Development Regulations, the terms of reference for a land use impact assessment for the proposed development of a residential subdivision at 583, 585 Conception Bay Highway and Butler's Road South be approved as presented with the additional requirement that direct access to Conception Bay Highway and determination of traffic impacts related to that approach also be assessed, so moved. Seconder. Councillor Moore's discussion. Sure, Worship, this is a development that uh, has seen some early concerns among local residents, and this was uh, this was a, a point that uh, an earlier council, I guess, uh, instituted that this land use impact assessment uh, report be completed, and uh, this this council. Uh, have gone ahead and, and indicated that yes, this should uh, should uh, be one of the conditions. Okay, and this is a housing development, is it, Councillor? It is, Your Worship. Okay. Any further discussion, Councillor Connors? Yeah, and I, I I think I just want to emphasize that this will give the the public or in the area an opportunity to be able to put forward some of their concerns as well. And we've heard quite a quite a few of them. And I've spoken to a number of residents, but this will give an opportunity for them to put information forward as well. Yeah, part of the process, uh, once you start it, then uh, people get to have their have their say as they wish. And uh, that's part of the process, and we welcome it. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Number 6E, recommendation, be so resolved that under the authority of Section 16 of the Urban and Rural Planning Act 2000, Conception Bay South Municipal Plan Amendment Number 25-2022 and Development Regulations Amendment Number 43-2022 be adopted. And further, be it so resolved that under authority of Section 19 of the Urban and Rural Planning Act 2000, Mr. Stephen B. Jepchek be appointed as, appointed as commissioner to hold a public hearing and complete the report respecting municipal plan Municipal Plan Amendment Number 25, 2022, and Development Regulations Amendment Number 43, 2022, and further be so resolved in accordance with the directive from the Department of Municipal and Provincial Affairs, a paper-based public hearing regarding Conception Bay South Municipal Plan Amendment Number 25, 2022, and Development Regulations Amendment Number 43, 2022, be held with a supplementary public hearing at 7 p.m. on November 2nd, 2022, through the Zoom online meeting platform. So moved. 
Seconder. Deputy Mayor Goss, discussion. Uh, yes, Your Worship, to summarize this, uh, this is a, a rezoning project we've been working our way through uh, in the Seal Cove area, actually across the street from uh, College of the North Atlantic. Uh, we're to the point now of appointing an independent commissioner to hold a public hearing so that the local residents can have uh, can have further input uh, into the process. And that uh, public hearing will take place uh, at 7 p.m. on November 2nd uh, through uh, a Zoom uh, platform. And with the option of written submissions prior to that. Any further discussion on this? And uh, of course, we'll uh, announce the date and time and Zoom information through our social media and our website and, and so forth uh, for anyone that wants to uh, join in and, and either contribute, uh, I guess, directly or uh, just listen in and watch. And I would suspect it's going to be available on our YouTube channel as it usually is. I, the last one I ended up getting in late, so I joined into the YouTube and watched it as it went on. Okay. Uh, all in favor? All right. Contrary minded? Carried. Number 6F, recommendation be so resolved that subject to payment of the appropriate fee and deposit and in accordance with section 14 of the Urban Rural Planning Act 2000, the town undertake initial public and stakeholder consultation with respect to proposed rezoning of property at 1216 Rylaps Road, Brayside Lane from residential medium density to residential multi-unit. So moved. Seconder. Councilor Barrett, discussion? Uh, yes, Your Worship, this is the first time we've seen this uh, proposal here. Uh, we have a proponent interested in developing multi-unit uh, uh, multi unit building on that uh, piece of property at 1216 Rideouts Road. And we're sending it out basically to the public for uh, for reaction. And that's the one right here next to across from Town Hall, I guess. Right across from Town Hall. Yeah. Any yeah. further discussion? Sir, uh, when we say multi-unit, we're talking multi-story, multi-unit. Yes. Basically, uh, uh, not just a ten unit as we refer to. Is it fair to, to call it an apartment building, or would that be an apartment building type yeah. apartment situation? Residential medium density covers a minimum of ten units, I believe. Yeah, minimum ten. Okay. Minimum ten. So we'll send that out for uh, for discussion. Any further discussion? Yes, yeah, so it doesn't be a significant building. Yeah. Any further discussion on that? Yes, Councilor Barrett. I think there. I, yeah, I, I'm really interested in hearing the public on this because there's a lot of potential for this type of development here, and but we hear time and time again the, the need for these types of units. So uh, I'm interested in uh, seeing where this goes. All in favor? All right. Contrary minded. Carried. And finally, your worship. Excuse uh, me, uh, Mr. Chair. I have to declare conflict again on the blank recommendation. Uh, for two reasons. And, uh, first one is 22 to 26B Marsh Road. Uh, I have a family relative who fits the criteria for conflict of interest. And as well, um, 22, 24 Cherry Lane. And I, I, I want to, I guess, I guess put it out there that I, I didn't declare a conflict of interest when this first started, because even though I do have family members who live on further different areas from this proposed location, but since the uh, your presentation of the uh, online petition or on the petition to the last public council meeting, uh, it was brought to my attention that I have some family members who have signed that said petition. So I'll have to officially declare interest at this time. All right. Thank you, Councillor Tilly. Uh, Mr. Mayor, are we doing 22-24 as a separate recommendation? Yeah. yeah. So are you doing, which one are you doing first? 22 and 24. Okay. Uh, yes, Your Worship, uh, before we get to the blanket uh, recommendation, I have a recommendation coming out of our committee to hold meeting earlier this evening, and that's relating to 22 to 24 Cherry Lane that Councillor Tilly uh, referenced. Uh, recommendation be so resolved that in consideration of feedback from the public and that the proposal could lead to development that is inconsistent with the character of the neighborhood. The request for rezoning of 2224 Cherry Lane from residential low density to residential medium density is refused. So moved. Seconder. We don't have a seconder. We do have a seconder. Councillor Hardy, discussion? Uh, yes, Your Worship. This is a, a rezoning proposal that we uh, we put out to the public, uh, I guess, a month ago now. And it's worked its way out. And we got response back. I believe we had 
around 30 submissions in writing and and of course there was a petition at our last council meeting so council has reviewed all of that and uh, this evening we bring forward this uh, this motion to refuse any further discussion uh yeah i just wanted to make a few comments um over the past while i've been really struggling with our rezoning um municipal plan amendments uh, spot zoning or whatever and more about the process as opposed to individual um, areas uh, we've heard loud and clear from this uh, area that they that they'd want to, this development to go there but there is a process that we that we do follow and uh, tonight we'll vote to, to, to stop that process but I'd like for us to be able to look at our rezoning uh process and see if we can we can see if it's a something that we have to follow right on through or if there's any adjustments to be made because we receive a lot there's a lot of um uh, demand now for duplexes and multi-unit buildings and affordable housing and uh, accessible housing that we need to address and right now there are certain areas that in our uh, municipal plan that don't they're not covered off so we are going to have to do rezoning rezoning is not going to disappear in all all parts of our town we need to uh we need to work a process where we can work with residents and to inform them of us what the intention is uh how it can be a benefit to their uh residential areas it's not going to be a detriment uh we're going to probably miss out on some opportunities. So I'd like, I'd like for us to have a look at the whole rezoning, how we're the process that we follow right now. And just to point out that it is a process that is fully paid by the developer. It doesn't cost the town anything. The developer has to request the rezoning. They pay the money, they pay the, their money, ends up paying the independent commissioner. And I think that we need to just have a look at that and tighten it up a bit. And yeah. I, I just like to say, um, you know, I did struggle with this also. Um, however, I respect the fact that we went to the public and got public feedback and it was you know, quite obvious in a couple of days that this area was not in favor of this. But with what Councillor Connors is saying, I do believe that we need a process and we need to follow it through and that we need to realize that we do need more housing in our community and we need to be inclusive and we need to do it fair across the board. So um, I just wanted to make that known. Thank you. Yep, Councilor Barrett. Yeah, I can chime in with this one too. I mean, this has been a very difficult decision for me, truth be told. I mean, this has come up a few times at council. Initially, the the applicant put forward when it was our one and we, we denied it. And then they put forward uh, this rezoning process that we're we're into at this present moment, and I brought that forward because this is democracy. This is what we do here in chambers, and I felt based on the proposal that this individual had an opportunity to explore what that might look like, talk to some residents. We could hear what they have to say, and so it was purely for me putting this open to the public and seeing what they had to say. And to both Councillor Connors and, and Councillor Moores, there is an established process right now, which we could refer back to, to the province and then get a commissioner, like we already identified earlier this evening with another um, file. And we could uh, certainly follow through with this on this file, and, and maybe there's an opportunity to tighten that up a bit. But I feel where we are right now um, we're at a position to, I, I, I feel I've heard uh, enough on, on how I, I want this to proceed. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a matter of the traffic in the area or, 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 or some of those things. I mean, there was a school there, there was an RNC building there, but just based on that particular area and that particular neighborhood, um, you know, I think the residents have spoken. I'm 100% with Councillor Moores. I think we need to be very, very cognizant of integrated planning moving forward with reflection of labor market uh, demands and, and multi-unit housing and affordable housing. 
um, and, and I'm very um, supportive of that. For this particular file right now, I think we are in a position to um, deny that this evening. Thank you, Councillor Barrett. Would anyone else like to uh, speak to this uh, motion? Um, I'll just uh, finish off the discussion. Uh, first of all, to me, it doesn't matter uh, where the proposal is, whether it's Cherry Lane or Seal Cove or Chamberlain's or, or whatever, that, that doesn't make any difference to me. Uh, what does make a difference to me, though, is uh, uh, I've stood with residents uh, in uh, developments off of Fowler's Road in the Chamberlain's area uh, when there's been applications that uh, create a structure that may be out of character with what's been there in established uh, neighborhoods. And, uh, you know, uh, and they haven't been rezoning applications. They've been uh, you know, where we've had our discretion uh, to uh, to move forward or not move forward. And, uh, you know, it's the same here. I think uh, this goes further. It's We're talking about a rezoning in an area that's been zoned probably since the beginning of zoning, uh, you know, and, uh, and uh, I think that uh, it would be uh, inconsistent for me to change all of a sudden and say, well, Cherry Lane is not the same as, is not the same as. I know people have used the argument the other way is Cherry Lane is a special compared to other areas. And I don't think that's true either. I, th I just think that a um, uh, consistent approach to uh, how you deal with established neighborhoods and ensuring that uh, established neighborhoods have the opportunity to stay there, keep their character, uh, stay uh, the way that they have been. And of course, you know, that building there has been used for many things over the years. But one of the things that uh, residents did wouldn't expect is that it be used for something that's outside the zoning that it currently is. And that would be, uh, contradictory to probably some of the reasons some of the people moved there. And it's uh, some, and you don't want to hurt anything in areas to have people want to feel like they have to leave the area where they are. And I don't think that would have been the case in this case at all. I don't think that this uh, development would have been uh, uh, that much of a detriment. However, uh, to cause us to uh, change our zoning and to, uh, and to do something completely different in this area, I don't think is, is fair either. Um, you know, and then there's other neighborhoods that, uh, you know, have seen uh, applications uh, for structures that would have just not fit with everything else around them. And that's something that we've seen in the years past and it's something we need to get away from. However, the need for multi-unit uh, uh, housing is, 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 is amazing. The, the people that talk to me about it, seniors, you know, young families looking for places to live, to rent. And one of the things, you know, that we talked about at the urban municipalities is one of the things that's exacerbated uh, the ability for people to find the types of housing that they want is these Airbnb style places where owners can get much more money renting by the night than they can renting to a family or a young family or a senior citizen or seniors. And it's taken those right off of the market. And uh, it's, it's a problem, not just in CBS, it's a problem in St. John's. It's a problem in rural communities that these, you know, uh, homes are now no longer available to rent for somebody that wants to be there by the month. But if you want to spend $150 a night, you can't. And that, of course, uh, puts it way out of competition. So I agree with you, Councillor Connors, that we need to look forward in these uh, areas and we need to, to plan for them. And when we get applications, we need to be mindful of the, uh, the multi-variable uh, type of housing that, that the town really needs. And you know, uh, 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 something that I don't mind saying out loud, if, if, if people are charging 100 or $150 a night at Airbnbs and we're not getting taxed for them, yet we're taxing other places, that's something we got to have a serious look at, you know, and, uh, and if, it's, it's, if it's money that uh, should be going to help the taxpayers of Conception Bay South, then we ought to make sure that it does. Anyway, um, is there any other discussion? Did anybody else want to follow up on that before we go to vote? Okay. All in favor? All right. Contrary minded? Carried. And your worship, uh, finally, the, uh, the blanket recommendation, which uh, lead councillor. I have to step out. Uh, the development on Marsh Road is very uh, next close to my house. <laughs> okay, and councillor Tilly will remain in the back of the room. Comfortable back there, councillor Tilly. <laughs> Good. Yeah. They wouldn't be sitting in the back of the room in my class. I can tell you that now. Neither one of them. <laughs> Uh, yes, Your Worship, uh, recommendation being so resolved that citizens' recommendations made at the Planning and Development Committee meeting on December 12, 2022 be accepted as presented. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Butler. Discussion. Uh, yes, Your Worship, as you can see, there were 
several other topics that we dealt with at the meeting uh, that did not require uh, recommendations and therefore were not brought forward this evening. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Hillier. Okay. All right, so we're moving on to uh, recommendations of, I'll make sure I'm in the right area, recommendations of Engineering and Public Works Committee. Councillor Gerard Tilley. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the following are our recommendations of our Engineering and Public Works Committee meeting from last week. 7A is a ratification of purchase order number 2022-0101, unit 245. Be it so resolved that approval be given to ratify purchase order number 2022-0101 in the amount of $57,816.51 plus HST to SMS equipment for repairs to unit 245, which is a Komatsu front end loader. Funds to be taken from the budget account, so moved. Seconder. Councilor Hillier, discussion? All in favor? Contrary minded? Carried. Uh, 7B is a new depot preliminary site work. Uh, it is imperative that the town of Conception Bay South, uh, uh, imperative that our operations for public works are able to maintain services that, as the town grows and evolves. The town's current public works depot is over 40 years old. And in addition, we currently utilize several other spaces throughout the town to ensure adequate labor and materials are available. We have undertaken preliminary reviews of potential sites and will continue to work we will continue with preliminary work until a site is selected. We are un unable to confirm at this time details of site locations, um, site selection this early in the process due to legal processes and applications. So be it so resolved that approval be given to engage progressive engineering consultants to complete a preliminary site investigation and plan for potential public works depot site at approximate cost of $15,000, including HST. Funds are available in the budget account, so moved. Seconder. Councillor Morris, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. 7C is a ratification of purchase order 2022-0777 uh, pertaining to the Chaders, Chaders Road lift station maintenance. Be it so resolved that approval is given to ratify purchase order number 2022-0777 in the amount of $22,626 plus HST to Xylem for, for Traders Road lift station pump repairs. Funds are available in the budget account, so moved. Seconder. Councillor Morris, discussion. Yes, Your Worship, this is just part of our, our, our regular maintenance that we have with our lift stations uh, throughout the town. All in favor? All right. Contrary minded? Carried. And Your Worship, uh, before I read the uh, blank recommendation, I, was, I want to bring it to like some of the issues that are happening in CBS from the Public Works Department. Uh, capital projects, we have a ton of work that is currently either completed or is still ongoing. So uh, we'll start there on water and sewer. Uh, work is continuing on Glebe Road, Mission Road, Pine Tree, Frog Pond, and I believe that's it from our water and sewer work. And of course, uh, work is, a, uh, work is a going ongoing as well on Pond Road. Um, so our street upgrading, all streets uh, have been paved with the exception of Neil's line of Drew's Road or Dunshill Road, as our works continue on those streets. And uh, as Councillor or Deputy Mayor Goss alluded to earlier on, Dunshill Road, we expect that to be paved uh, pretty soon. I just want to remind residents as well that Neil's line has a detour in effect, uh, but we will also maintain a pedestrian walkway for kids going back and forth to school. And uh, we expect that to be in place until the uh, first week of October. And as well, uh, there will be a water disruption scheduled for Friday, September 30th in the Kelligrews area to allow for installation of new water services along Pond Road. And the public notices and details will be announced in the coming weeks. Uh, just uh, some more of our capital works projects. Uh, the library, as, you, as everyone can certainly see, we are in the final stages, uh, completing interior finishes and landscaping. And of course, the public opening announcements will be coordinated with the local library and provincial libraries board later on in the year. And as well, uh, lots of action going on in our community park. Uh, the rubber matting 
uh, began installation earlier on this week and is uh, anticipated to take two weeks. Uh, interior building finishes are also ongoing and nearing its final stages. And we will let the public know uh, when the uh, grand opening will be held and coordinated internally and announced over the next few weeks. Uh, winter preparation, our public works department has been making preparations for winter services, which include snow clearing contracts, procuring to salt and hiring seasonal winter operators. And let's hope we never had to put any salt down for the next six months, but that'll be wishful thinking. Uh, public works has also started our 2023 uh, budget. Uh, the committee has been actively engaged with uh, early bu budget preparation for 2023. Challenges for next year's engineering public works operations include the escalation of the cost of materials and fuel that is required annually to main ser maintain services. Through so early and considerate discussions, mitigating the significant increase in operational costs will require creativity, reprofiling funds, and some difficult decisions. As part of our early budget planning, the committee began debate on the 2023 sidewalk locations and project funding allocations. It is the intent that locations will be selected by late fall and cost shared funding sources and combined procurement processes can be utilized to deliver this priority program while stick handling, while handling cost of inflation. And as well, of course, as everyone is aware, uh, last week we had a, a hurricane or like, I guess the remnants of Hurricane Earl. I uh, just want to let residents know that overall damages were mitigated uh, relative to other parts of the Avenon Peninsula. Unofficial weather uh, data provided by Environment and Climate Change Canada shows that Conception Bay South received uh, in excess of 180 milliliters of rain during the storm at an unprecedented amount. Uh, due to significant upgrades to our road and storm sewer infrastructure over the last several years, uh, we had uh, we had uh, we never had any any major problems in in our in our town. Of course, we did have some water course, uh, some water courses did experience overtopping and flooding of surrounding areas. Those areas uh, will con continue to be investigated, assessed, and any work required will be uh, prioritized at the time. Uh, just a couple other uh, announcements. The September 30th is the Truth and Reconciliation Day, Truth and Reconciliation Canada Day uh, holiday. Uh, there'll be no changes to our waste collection on that particular day. And of course, our, I believe our last bulk garbage drop-off program for the year uh, starts on Saturday, October 15th, and again on October 22nd. And I believe that's it from Public Works. And to that end, I have to declare a conflict of interest once again. I got to go back and check. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's there's one one item there was discussed in the uh, blank recommendation 764 766 Conception Bay Highway stormwater concerns. Uh, I have a relative who uh, bought that property or lives next uh, right next to that property, so I have to declare a conflict in that as well. And Councilor Hardy is going to take over that recommendation. Councilor Tilly, you are an absolute public works almanac. Yeah, I think you've covered everything except for telling folks it's only 65 days to Christmas Eve. <laughs> yes, sir, Hardy. Thank you, Mayor Bent. Be it so resolved that the recommendation and decisions being made at the committee meeting of September 13th meeting uh, be accepted as presented. Uh, some of the things we discussed at that meeting was the capital projects update, our water statistics, uh, the update on the sidewalk program, and uh, started some uh, initial discussions on the budget preparation. You're moving that, we'll have a seconder. Councillor uh, Butler, uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried? Thank you, Councillor Hardy and Councillor Tilly. Recommendations of the Recreation and Leisure Services Committee. Uh, Chair Councillor Moores wasn't in attendance. Councillor Connors. Lead the way. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we only had the blanket recommendation for this week. So but before I get into the blanket recommendation, I got some things to note, not as long as public works. I don't have all those details or the money. <laughs> uh, first thing I I don't think it's gonna, is the CBS Soccer Association recently gave out their annual awards. And I just wanted to recognize the people who were 
uh, given the awards, Junior Female uh, Athlete of the Year for under, thir uh, under 13 and younger, Adele Martin, Junior Male Athlete of the Year, under 13 and younger, Thomas McCarthy, Senior Female Athlete of the Year, under 15 and older, uh, Ali Fraser Senior, uh, Male Athlete of the Year, under 15 and older, Daniel Martin, uh, Team of the Year, the boys under 13 Premier Youth League Strikers, which won the Provincial Champions, and I think Councillor Moore's son played on that team. Waving pom-poms. Yeah, she is waving pom-poms. <laughs> She's pretty excited. Uh, coach of the year was uh, Ryan Keynes, and official year was uh, Daniel Martin. And uh, the next one is the volunteer of the year, and it was our own... Uh, Captain uh, Chad Murphy with our fire department, who was recognized as Volunteer of the Year. And uh, Chief Heffernan, I'd like for you to pass that along. Our congratulations to him from council. Uh, the next thing that I just wanted to mention is that we're starting to ramp up our 50th anniversary celebrations for the incorporation of the town. You'll people will start seeing some things moving forward. We're starting to put together a couple of committees uh, to to get this off the ground and have a year of celebration next year for our 50th anniversary. And that being said, be it so resolved that the recommendations and decisions of the Recreation and Leisure Services Committee meeting of September 13, 2022 be accepted as presented. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Hardy, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Okay, recommendations of the Financial and Administrative Services Committee Chair, Deputy Mayor Andrea Goss. Thank you, Mayor Bent. The recommendations of Financial Administrative Services Committee of uh, September 12th and 13th are as follows. Our first item, 9A accounts payable checks. Be it so resolved that approval be given to pay accounts payable check payable checks totaling $236,879.39 as per the attached listing. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Hardy, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. 9B for manual checks. Be it so resolved that approval be given to ratify the payment of manual checks totaling $344,286.53. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Moores, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Item 9C is direct payments. Be it so resolved that approval be given to ratify direct payment totaling $334,256.77. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Butler. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Contrary minded. Yeah, carried. Item 9D is a capital invoice approval. Be it so resolved that approval be given to pay capital invoices totaling $550,512.92 as per the attached report, so moved. Seconder. Councillor Morris, discussion. Uh, Mayor Bent, these are our capital works projects. There are, these are invoices for engineering and for the actual construction uh, to, our sub, to our contractors. We have phase 48 water and sewer, uh, our 2022 water and sewer upgrades, our pool roof repair. They are the, the major uh, components of this uh, of this capital invoice approval. Paying the bills. And Paying for the bills. discussion. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carrie? 9E, tax and other receivables adjustments. Be it so resolved that approval be given to adjust tax and other receivable accounts as follows. Um, two accounts there, um, uh, 128493 and 46884. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Hillier. Discussion. Uh, these are just uh, some adjustments to accounts. One was due to a business closure, unfortunately, in 2019 due to COVID 19. Uh, and this uh, um, 
business owner is just trying to clean up their accounts and uh, straighten things up with the town. The other one is due to a business closure, but the business moved to a new location. So cleared out one account in one location and uh, there's set up somewhere else. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. So the next item, fine. I don't get to bring a lot of exciting news, but I got a little bit of news here. So um, 9F 2023, 2022-2023 ICIP approval street paving and upgrading. Be it so resolved that we, the ultimate recipient, the town of Conception Bay South, accept cost shared funding as outlined in the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure Project approval letter dated August 26, 2022. Project number 17-RNC-230001, street upgrading and paving, has a total project value of $2,190,750. The town will enter into a funding agreement with the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure and provide the ultimate recipient share value of $662,150. So moved. Seconder, Councillor Hillier. <laughs> sounds, sounds like a good deal there, Deputy Mayor Dodds. Yep, yeah, these are great. These are, these are 33 cent dollars. It's uh, it's a good day, and uh, our staff are always uh, making applications for funding, and uh, so this this was just an application that was done, I think, back in spring, and uh, we had a list of streets that we put in that we want for approval, and they came back with uh, approval of this funding, and so uh, yes, we're taking it, and we're uh, going to make a plan now on how we will spend that in 2023. Okay, so we'll be all choking on the smell of asphalt again next oh, year. Oh, yes, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Good. We Well-deserved in a lot of places, for sure. Yeah. Um, any stuff. further discussion on that one? All in favor? <laughs> Contrary-minded? Didn't think so. And the last item, 9G, department report. Be it so resolved that decisions and recommendations of the Administrative Services Committee held a, a meeting held on the 12th, uh, 2022 and the financial services meeting held on September 13th, 2022 be accepted as presented. And the following items were discussed. Our capital project update, capital change orders, budget 2023, breakwater repair, enforcement, humane services statistics, fire department statistics, block parties, council communications, and departmental reports. So moved. Seconder. Councilor Barrett. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Goss. Recommendations of Economic Development and Tourism, Chair Councillor Christine Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, only have the blanket recommendation tonight, and in that you'll see some of the things that we did discuss. Be it so resolved that the recommendations and decisions made at the Economic Development and Tourism Committee meeting of September 13, 2022, be accepted as presented and list as gateway marketing, downtown CBS funding and breakfast, Conception Bay Area Chamber events and AGM, Saver CBS, trailway signage, and the departmental report. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Moores, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Thank you, uh, Councillor Butler. Uh, does anyone have any other committee reports this evening? Okay, we'll start. We'll start with you, Councillor Butler, and work our way around the table. Okay, uh, just wanted to let everybody know that the town senior advisory committee met for the first time in person since COVID nineteen on September thirteen. The committee is made up of representatives from the community, staff, and council. This group provides information and advice on matters relating to seniors to the town and council. Currently, the group will be, will be reviewing the results of the age-friendly assessment. This will be to develop a series of goals and objectives to further the work of the committee, and the assessment provides good information to the committee on issues facing seniors and how they can be remediated. And uh, we will be meeting uh, every two weeks for the next little while just to really get a grasp on this and to discuss it with the rest of the uh, committee members. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Butler. Councillor Moores. 
Thank you, Mayor Bent. Um, I had a meeting for the downtown CBS board on uh, last Thursday. Um, so I just want to bring a couple things forward. Uh, the girl that they had hired for the summer, Brianne, um, she was fantastic and she really made a big difference when it comes to the marketing and social media for the downtown association. So she's actually staying on part time um, to continue doing her work. And I, if anyone follows the downtown CBS on Instagram, et cetera, you know, you will notice that there's been a big improvement. So um, I encourage everyone to like and share and follow them and share that with your residents and all your wards. Um, also, the paving for the sidewalk in Anchorage to the TAC bill has been completed. So just want to give a shout out to the BIA for taking that on. I think that's a big improvement in that area and I uh, want to thank them for doing that. Um, another thing is, which uh, Councillor uh, Butler <laughs> has already mentioned, is the Bright Business Awards, which will be happening during Small Business Week, October 16th to 22nd. Um, and finally, the BIA has partnered with the Yacht Club to host a concert on October 8th. So that's something exciting that's going to be coming up. So stay tuned for details on that. Thank you. Some good news stuff there. And Councillor Hardy, I believe. Yep. Thank you, Mayor Bent. Um, last Wednesday, I had a board meeting with the Visions Employment um, group. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone's aware, but um, it's a nonprofit community-based employment corporation um, that provides employment-related services and support to adults and high school students with intellectual disabilities and facing barriers of employment. Um, so they do uh, career exploration, job search, interview preparation, resume writing, job coach support, and placement. So right now we actually have 37 clients that are presently employed uh, and 35 who work uh, year round positions. And we just got a couple of those which are seasonal. Um, of the 37 uh, positions, 22 of them are actually full-time positions. So anywhere from 20 to 40 hours a week and 15 are part-time positions of just 20 hours or less per week. So certainly got lots of opportunities there. But we do have a wait list of nine adult uh, clients who are, are um, looking to get some more dev job development in the um, municipality. So certainly put a plug out there to any of the CBS's uh, businesses um, that are interested in taking on a um, a job, um, a job coach and an adult client, they'd certainly entertain it. So you, all you would have to do is to reach out to uh, Visions Employment, Michelle Gajard. Um, she's a job developer at Visions and she handles a group of clients and any new inquiries. So certainly I want to put that plug out there for them. Um, one new thing that they're doing now is offer an employment program for high school students um, who are interested in either part-time employment throughout the year or summer employment. So if anyone is interested in that, or if you know someone, uh, certainly send them on to the, um, the Visions employment um, folks, just there in Mount Pearl. Uh, you, Mayor Ben, sorry, there was one thing I forgot. The downtown CBS members breakfast is Monday, September 27th at 8 a.m. at Manuel's River. Um, obviously, it's for members of the BIA, but council is invited, correct? All council is invited? Yes, yeah. So if you haven't already RSVP, please do so. Okay, yes. thank you, Councillor Hardy and Councillor Morris. Uh, any further committee reports that we haven't gone over yet? Yes, Councillor Barrett. Sorry, just a quick one. Um, I am um, on the Municipalities Newfoundland Labrador Youth Caucus Committee which met today, which is also why I was late for committee the whole. But um, yeah, just a quick update on that front. Now that the school year has started, uh, MNL is starting to work with the caucus on ways in which we can engage youth and high school students in um, enhancing their interest in local government. And I understand we are relaunching our youth advisory committee imminently and i believe deputy mayor you may be the representative on that and so we'll certainly connect with you on ways that we can um look at enhancing our interest in democracy on young people in in the town so uh yeah that was today okay thank you uh, councillor barrett um that pretty well does it for this evening our next uh, public council meeting is october the 4th and we'll be back there in for council, that's just one day off the one year anniversary of this council. So um, I'm sure we'll celebrate that in two weeks time. Anyway, uh, do I have a motion for adjournment this evening? Councillor Tilly, seconded by Councillor Moores. Thank you, everyone. Good night. <laughs>